Yesterday I looked at that Sony CDPS 27 CD player that the laser assembly was shot. It, the, the lenses are clouded on it. It's just not playing back properly and it needs a new pickup, which we can't get. I explained that to the customer and he said, I want you to change the burned out light bulb just so that I've got it in my, in my display and it looks like it works. So we're going to change the light bulb. It's a little more involved than you would think. Let's check it out. Okay, we're back on the CD player that has the bad laser. The fellow that owns it wants the uh, light bulb replaced. I'm going to show you how to change the light bulb in one of these units. Just because it's not as cut and dry as it was in the tuner. A little bit more work. It's not a huge job, but a little bit more work to do that on this one. We have to remove the top cover. I got to remove the bottom cover and the faceplate. Bottom cover comes off. A couple screws. As does the faceplate. You'll see why in a minute why I have to remove this bottom cover. The lamp solder is in place up top here on this little board. However, I need to open the CD drawer, remove the front of the faceplate here to do it. So remove this faceplate because I got to take the front panel off. Remove that and close it. Okay, now I got to remove the faceplate, but I also, I can't get at the LCD from here. I actually have to remove the CD unit itself. There's four screws that hold this down. And then that'll allow the CD unit to lift up so that I can take the cover off to get to the light bulb in behind the display. I can release the clips here and lift off the, the, the covering for the, uh, the diffuser. So I'll just pop the little clips out for that so I can get at the light bulb. One clip there and there's another clip back here, one on each side basically. I'll pop with that clip and that clip and the one on the other side over here. And then I can get to the little light bulb which is right there on the board. Now I can pop the bulb out and do that from the bottom. And this one here actually, it looks like this laser actually is a replaceable laser. It's a KSS 160 is the number on this laser. But I looked that up and that's not available either. So the entire assembly is not available, nor is the actual laser pickup. It's got cataracts on the lens. But it uh, looks like at one point this was a replaceable assembly. But you see there's, there's more to it than that because there's another mirror in behind here. There's a grating plate under here. The laser shines this way and the light reflects in through a mirror, then it comes in and it goes up another mirror, then it comes back and then it reflects this way and goes to the photo detector, which I think is over, over here on this one. No, it's back here. So laser's here and the photo detector is here. So there's a, there's a mirror here, there's a mirror that goes across a, an angle here, and that's the adjustment for it, which you don't ever, ever, ever touch. Same with these ones. These will affect the alignment, you don't touch them. There's a the laser shines here, hits a mirror, goes this way, hits another mirror, reflects up. Signal comes back down through that mirror, reflects here, and then passes through this mirror and gets to the detector on this one. And that's where our problems are on this one, is the, uh, the, the, the mirrors themselves are crowded. Okay, now I can get to this light bulb, and if I can get to my soldering iron, I can remove it.
can now prep another expensive bulb. When I say expensive, these bulbs are like a couple dollars a piece to, to buy them. They're just, they become ridiculously expensive. And I'll prep this one and get this bulb fished in. All right, let's try it out. Well, it lights up. Okay, that's good. Now I gotta kind of tuck it down inside here and put the the uh, diffractor back around it here, and that'll reflect a little bit of light. Well, reflect most of the light towards the LCD screen that these ones used. Okay, now that's taken care of. Now I can replace the rest of the chassis that doesn't work. Just say we're going through the motions on this one just to, to make it uh, aesthetically look like it works even though it doesn't. I guess just so that when it's turned on 0000, zero, zero, zero shows up on the, the, the uh, display or no disk. I guess it'll just say no disk. That's probably all it'll say. A lot of work just to make something look aesthetically pleasing. But that's what I was asked to do, so that's what I have done. I put the two screws back in for the bottom plate. And put the top cover on. And this one is uh, looking as good as it's going to look. It displays zero. Panel back on now. This slides in like this. And clips down. There. Just like that. And now it displays track zero. Can you see it? It's there. It's not very bright. Not in, the, not in here anyway. I can read it here, no problem. But yeah, that's all it will do. It just says disk. When there's no disk in it, it'll go out. And that's it. It just says track zero, but at least it matches the rest of the system, which is what the owner of it was after. And who knows, maybe a laser can be found for this. At some point, it might get the laser done, but um, I say good luck. Because I don't know where to find a laser for something like this. The sources that I have all tell me it's not available. I guess somewhere out there in eBay land there might be one, but at what cost? Okay, there it is. It's just going to display zero. Thanks for watching.